In this Dragonfly 3 training video, we're going to examine the behavior of LUTs, or lookup tables. Lookup tables are the tools you use to map image intensity to on-screen color. The LUT behavior in Dragonfly 3 is independent for 2D, or our MPR views, from the 3D view. You can see in this workspace I have one data set located. This is my Moloch, or Thorny Devil, which is a micro CT scan that comes from the Digimorph collection, scanned at UTCT, hosted at the University of Texas. And in my workspace, you can see that in the MPR, or 2D views, I have the Spectrum lookup table for my 2D lookup table. And in my 3D view, I have a lookup table called Blue Orange. In either one of these places, you can choose the dropdown to change to a different lookup table. You can, once you have a lookup table selected, it applies the, the coloring. And so if you look in my 2D view for a moment, you see that I have intensities in my history. I'm going to go from 0 to 50,737. Those intensities are mapped onto color. In this case, it's the spectrum color map that goes from a purple through blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. And you can see how those intensities are mapped on my window level. If I adjust my window level, you can see that everything Below the minimum is this purple or magenta, and everything above the maximum is red. And so the combination of the window leveling settings with the lookup table affects your on-screen appearance. If I affect re apply reset, it will reset the window. If we look in the 3D setting, we see that there are some pixels whose values are zero, but they're not being rendered black. In fact, they're actually being rendered transparent. If I click on the edit button of my lookup table, you'll see that there is actually an alpha intensity map, and that's what this diagonal represents. This lookup table is mapping the intensities, which you see in this histogram, to the colors. And there are a number of color nodes going from black to dark purple and dark green all the way through orange and white. But each one of these nodes also has an alpha intensity, or how much transparency is associated with it. And so that's why these pixels outside don't show up at all. It's because they are all very low or very completely transparent. We'll look more at that in a minute. In the 2D window, the alpha intensities are ignored unless you tell Dragonfly to attend to them. This use alpha LUT tells Dragonfly to use the alpha intensities. And so now that you can see that all those low values are actually now being rendered mostly transparent. So that behavior is off until you click that checkbox. Let's return to the 3D window, and let's return to the LUT editor. I showed you that we have a lookup table that's composed of all of these different colors. You can edit this. You can change the lookup table by changing these nodes in the, in the lookup table. You can click on a node, and you can change its color by using the color picker over here. So I could make that node bright blue if I want, and now you see there's a bright blue hue in some of these uh, surface features on the Moloch. You can also take a node and choose to delete it. These nodes are referred to as keys. We saw that you can adjust the alpha intensity by dragging this up or down. You can also take advantage of a behavior by clicking on the right mouse and choosing zero to the right. What this does is it allows you to zero out a particular band and I can drag this over. What we've done here is we've zeroed out the band that occupies most of the soft tissue, and so it's now being rendered completely transparent. And so now when I look in this window, I have a view where I have high opacity for my high intensities, which occupy the skeletal tissue, and the low intensities still have a little bit of opacity, and so when I go from very, very low intensity up through the beginning of the soft tissue, you can see this edge. And everything in here, which is mostly the soft tissue, is being rendered completely transparent. So you see I can manipulate the lookup table to create an, a unique rendering that contributes to the visual interpretation of the image. You can also click this button, which will take all of your nodes, no matter what intensity they happen to be, and it will put them on a straight alpha intensity ramp. You can always click here anywhere to create a new node, and it will take on its current color. 
you can see that this is a purple node and this is an orange node and there's a linear transition between orange and purple and if I click here I get that instant color and then I can manipulate. You also have the ability to right click on a node and tell it to split the key which allows you uh, to apply a discontinuity in your lookup table. At any time you could choose to clear in which case you get a grayscale lookup table or you could choose to reset which takes you back to the blue orange lookup table I started with. You also have the ability to invert which would now map in the opposite direction. Sometimes when you have data that it's inverted it's useful to have an inverted color lookup table and we have some here over in our lookup tables folder. So you have not only grayscale but you have one for black on white instead of white on black. The final option you should pay attention to is the save button which allows you to save your lookup table with all of your modifications for future use. So that concludes this discussion of lookup tables. The important thing to remember is that the lookup table for 2D and 3D are independent and they are managed separately just like window level settings are managed separately. Thank you.